An excerpt from How to Transform an Everyday Ordinary Hoop Court into a Place of Higher Learning. It's finally summer. Go ahead, take a deep breath. You're free. All year long, your mom's has been on you like glue about algebra worksheets and science fair projects and the knee-high stack of books Mrs. Baker assigned for English class. And you did what you had to. Two A's and four B's. Truth is, you're actually pretty smart. School comes easy. You told Baker in that end of the year five-page paper what was up with S. Bronze's dreams and the symbolism of the Mango Street house, and you pulled down a 96%, second highest grade in the class. But even as you typed out that essay, you had an indoor-outdoor in your lap. Between sentences, you daydreamed finger rolls over outstretched hands. See? Here's what all the hardcore homework pushers don't get. For people like you, ball is more than just ball. It's a way out. A path to those tree-lined lives they always show on TV. You've crunched the numbers and read the tea leaves. Fact is, you'll never hit the books as hard as boys boy genius Jeremiah Villa, Sylvia Diaz either, even your boyfriend Cisco from down the hall. There are folks in this world who live to mark up a fat world history textbook with an arsenal of colored highlighters. You're not one of them. You spend too much time on back alley ball handling drills to compete. Nah, the game of basketball is your best chance. The fate of your hoop development. For the past three years, you've spent every free minute balling at an outdoor court down the street from your building. After school, after games, weekends, you name it. Most nights you're still out there putting up shots alone when the sun falls behind the ocean and the automatic park lights come flickering on, spilling that strange yellow half lay across the cracked concrete. Ball is like anything else. Put in the hours, your game's gonna blast off. Your jumper's now pure out to 25 feet, give or take. You developed a little floater in the lane that leaves four slow-footed big men flailing, but it's your handle that sets you apart. Your quicks. The way you can get into the paint at will and finish with the other hand. The past season you scored more points than any other 8th grader in the county. You were second in assists. So what? It ain't good enough and you know it. Not if you want to be even more dominant next year in high school. That's why your ears perk up when you overhear a couple newcomers talking about Mooney Gym in Balboa Park. When you overhear the dude with love handles sitting on the stairs say to his boy. It's the best run in the city. B, I put that on everything. You ranked him out? The other guy says. Nah, I used the ball there all the time before I tweaked my back. If you could hang with them big boys at Mooney, shoot, you could just hang with just about anybody. Shelf the extra jumpers that night. Proceed instead to the local library when you could look up Mooney Gym online. Type the address into Google Earth where you'll discover it's right next to the Air and Space Museum. Your moms took you and your sis back in the day. In the air and Space Museum, if your calculations are correct, isn't but five miles from your pop's job at the factory. Wander into the cramped living room after dinner that night. Work up the guts of the scribe for your old man the importance of competing against the best. You've outgrown your local run. It's time to put a foot in the deep end. So what if he doesn't even know the rules of the game? If all he does is sit there silently inside the TV, working a toothpick in his teeth. So what do you think, Pop? About what? Would it be cool if I went with you to work every morning so I could play ball down there? He'll look at you suspiciously, then turn back to his cop show and his toothpick. You'll take this as a no and assume the fate of the most important summer of your hoop development now rests in the hands of the county bus system. But you'll be wrong. A few minutes later, he'll mumble, but have your skinny butt out by the car by five. I'll tell you that. Or else, I'm leaving without you. He won't even look up when he tells you this. Doesn't matter. Your heart will race with excitement. You'll tear into the room you share with your sis and lay your hoop gear out in the chair by your bed like some kind of giddy schoolgirl, which is pretty much how you'll feel. There's only today. Know that when your alarm starts blaring at 4.30 the next morning, you're going to have no idea where you are or what's happening. It'll still be dark outside. Your sis will be snoring. When reality finally settles in, the lazy part of your brain will try and sweet talk you back to sleep. Maybe we could, you know, skip the Mooney trip today go ball at the park instead. There's always tomorrow. Reach into your own skull and smack this part of your brain upside the head. If you let it in, this part of your brain will hold you back from every dream you'll ever have. Trust me. Crawl out of bed reminding yourself that your old man gets up like this every single day for work, rain or shine, and sickness and in health. Your uncles too. Respect them for this. Strive to be like them. During the entire 30 minute drive south, your old man will say two sentences to you max. Don't take it personally. 
Answer his question about the gym location and how you heard about it. Buckle your seatbelts when he gives you one of his patented dirty looks. Before you even hit the freeway on ramp, you'll be done talking, but that's okay. Shift your focus to the other details of the drive. The radio news show he turns on, the smell of his hot steaming black coffee, the scattered cars along the dark freeway, and the subtle tick of his turn signal whenever he changes lanes. By the end of the summer, these seemingly insignificant details will be ingrained in your brain. When he parks along the street near his factory, it'll still be a full three hours before Mooney Jim opens. But have your skinny butt back here by quarter to four, he'll say, snatching his lunch pail out of the back seat. It's a long walk home, I'll tell you that. After he disappears around the bend, turn your attention to the ancient Volkswagen bug. You'll wonder how the heck you're supposed to sleep inside such a tiny car, but after a little trial and error, you found the way. It'll involve folding your six foot one frame into a kind of human pretzel. Half of you will be in the back seat while the other half is curled up into the front passenger seat. Your bag strategically lodge in the center console to keep the handbrake from digging into your ribs. By day three, this next level yoga position will feel perfectly natural. But let's get something straight from the jump. This Mooney Gym summer isn't going to be one continuous loop of one shining moment. There will be lows too, on and off the court, trust me. A few weeks in, a meaty faced cop will knock on the windshield with the butt of his nightstick. Up, He'll son. look at you through aviator glasses, his right hand resting on a whole handgun. Try not to panic. His suspicions will be based on two simple facts. Number one, this is the first time during his rounds he's ever stumbled across a kid sleeping at a 90 degree angle inside a Volkswagen bug. Number two, your skin is brown. 2A, his skin will be brown too. Maybe even browner, but don't spend too much time worrying yourself about this. There's a complex psychology behind this phenomenon, one you're not ready to wrap your head around. At the end of your respectful explanation, the cop will slowly remove his hand from his gun. He'll grab hold of your left elbow instead and steer you toward the front office of the factory. Your pop will be summoned embarrassingly over the loudspeaker. Two minutes later, he'll emerge from the back looking wildly stressed. This is not because you've done anything wrong. It's because he has his own history with cops. Stuff that happened long before you were born. Stuff nobody ever talks about. After the cop explains the situation, your pop will put on an uncomfortable smile and vouch for you. He'll say you're a good kid that you're just down here to play some ball at a gym in Balboa Park. He'll shake hands with the cop enthusiastically, thanking him for his service and apologizing for any trouble you may have caused. Soon as the cop leaves, though, your pops will transform back into himself. Don't worry about that power-happy pentejo, he'll say, rubbing your shoulder. You didn't do nothing wrong. I was just sleeping. Mexicans are allowed to sleep, too. He'll look at you in the eyes, nodding, and in this moment, you'll feel closer to your old man than ever before. Fortunately, that's the only morning you'll be woken up by a nightstick. Every other morning, it will be the alarm on your phone, and you'll be free to climb out of the bug at your leisure. Stretch out your arms and legs. Breathe in the warm hillcrest air and remove your rock from your bag. It's time to get a move on. It won't take but three days to know all the shortcuts to Mooney. Dribble through the middle school playground where summer camp kids play double dutch and hopscotch and dodgeball. Dribble in and out of sleeping cars in the massive San Diego Zoo Park parking lot. Dribble through crowds of camera touting tourists shuffling toward the front gates of the zoo. Dribble past the various hot dog stands, the ice cream truck with the two flat tires, the leather-faced man selling raspas who looks like your late abuelito. By the end of the summer, these vendors will all recognize you and wave. It will take a little more than an hour for you to arrive at the large dilapidated building with the two locked green doors. Butterflies will dance inside your chest. The first time and every time following even years from now and that's how it should be because you can sense it here is where you will learn the world sentenced to the bleachers